Warning, this video will definitely contain spoilers for The Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 10, The Next World, so do be cautious as you go in and watch this video. What is going on everyone, this is Ninja Geek here, and today we are bringing you another episode of The Walking Dead Reviews, brought to you by the very own Ninja Geek right here on YouTube. So let's get right into this episode called, titled The Next World world of course right in the beginning we see them having a different time span between the last episode and this episode so the mid-season premiere happened two months ago according to the talking dead and uh, all around the internet that it did happen two months ago personally in my own opinion i would have liked to see them put something in the middle there so we can kind of get the inner gap between when Carl got shot and now obviously because now right now we can obviously tell that they're they seem to be doing really well since uh, the atmosphere in the room everyone's laughing you've got a picture of Carl with Judith there so it just kind of comes together as all being the community kind of driven itself has driven itself again to be put back together and I wish that there was just something in between there that kind of piece them together. It seems like something has been missing in my, from my own personal views. I don't know what the developers of the episode or the writers, I should say, were trying to think of doing. What were they were thinking of doing, going between the mid-season premiere and now? But uh, I, you know, I personally don't like the jump cut. But it's not. It didn't completely ruin the episode. It just. It was what it was, and so we'll move on from that. There were a lot of different things to follow within this episode, so I'm going to try and go as best as I can here because, of course, like you have the different storylines and trying to do it in order would just kind of get jumbled and jumping back and forth. So I wanted to start off with Carl and Anid because now we finally see Anid come back into the group after she rescued Glenn after she really saved Maggie. And we could see her kind of, I guess, developing as another character. Lots of people thought that she was a wolf herself, but that is not the case, at least still right now. It's unconfirmed, I guess, as I'm thinking about this right now. It is unconfirmed if she is or not, but uh, she definitely does not seem like one at all, in my own opinion. I never actually thought that she was back then when people were saying that Enid could potentially be one of the wolves in Secret Disguise. I never really believed that, and I still don't really believe that. But anyways... Uh, so what happened was that Carl and Anid had, they tried to get back into the woods, back into their thing of doing things, and Anid was kind of tired of doing the same thing, but it ends up that Carl spots Michonne and Spencer out there in the world, which we find out that Spencer was out there doing something. We don't know exactly what Spencer was doing, he just, at this point, we just know that he was out there doing something, and Michonne wanted to, I guess, help him whatever he wanted to do, and they kind of almost ran into each other, but not really, Carl just noticed them. Then, as they are leaving, meaning Carl and Anid are leaving because Anid doesn't want to be out there anymore and doing the same things over and over again Carl ends up running into a walker which we don't know who it is it must be someone significant at this point to make a, uh, a really impact uh, a real hard impact on Carl and, and a real shock because Anid wants to kill this thing while Carl on the other hand he just wants to uh, let Spencer do or you know we find out that Spencer ends up that it is Deanna and I kind of had a hunch that it, it was, judging by the way that it looked. It wasn't like a total surprise when she actually appeared as a walker uh, like later on in the episode, but it ended up being her. And uh, so, you know, it, it was what it was, but I feel that in my own personal opinion, how Carl wanted to to do this for Spencer as kind of... Uh, like, because if we, you know, think back to season three, Carl had to kill his own mother. I felt that he wanted to do the same thing for Spencer so he could feel the bind between, uh, conflicting things that happen within not just the Walking Dead world, but in, I guess you could say in real life as well. Not only was it a notable moment that Carl had between his himself and his mother back in season three, and that he also tried to portray that back onto Spencer, in this episode where he made him kill his own mother in that kind of bind scenario, but we also find out that Spencer was actually going out there to try and look for her because she, he did say that he actually saw her on that night and he never believed, he, I couldn't even believe myself two months later that she would still be wandering around and that he's still looking for her. Maybe he just never decided to go out there and look, but he finally did and he actually found her and that's the surprise, I guess, that he didn't want to tell 
film was shown because it was too secretive, but then we end up finding out right now. But on the other side, we do see Rick and Daryl kind of have another bind together, another mini episode between them, and of course, we've already talked about the beginning p- previous part of this episode, but I want to focus in on Rick and Daryl now because this, I feel like, was one of the better parts of the episode, not just what happened before, but with now. So we end up seeing them leave in a Chrysler, which I like to point that out because that is one of the car, or that is the car that I own. So hashtag Chrysler out there to all Chrysler fans. But anyways, getting on from that, they end up leaving and they find this like big truck with all these food supplies. And it's great because, you know, that's what they were out there for looking for food. Uh, Obviously, in times like this, they're going to want that. And so they end up finding this. I couldn't even believe myself that the truck started that they that they found there. And so they take the uh, the food truck and they bring it to a gas station. I would assume that they were trying to get gas, but I think that they were trying to actually attach another like food thing to it. I forget what the, the vending machines, they tried to attach that to it so that they could have more. And in turn, they end up immediately getting suddenly stopped by this man by the names of now we know, or the name now we know as Jesus, as he likes to call himself. And at first, it doesn't seem like this guy is trying to do any harm just because, first of all, like, the way that he acts towards them, if he wanted to do harm, he would have done something already, but he ended up, he ended up, you know, creating a distraction for Rick and Daryl and eventually escaping with the truck full of food supplies, leaving them... Uh, without a car or without any transportation, and most importantly, without the food. So then, uh, Rick and Daryl obviously go on foot because that's all they have left, so they try and chase this guy down in the truck. I don't know why they would have thought that he eventually he would have stopped, but he had, ended up did stopping later on down the road. And I don't know why the, one of the tires or something would have happened. But anyway, so the, the one tire or something came loose or whatever. And either Jesus was purposely trying to do that so he can try and get them to follow them. I'm not entirely sure on that. From the way that it looked, it didn't I don't know why the truck would have stopped. But they ended up catching up to him and they took the truck back. So it was kind of like a fight, fight back and forth between oh, this is my truck, this is his truck, this is my truck, whatever. But at the same time, it really just, at this point, doesn't seem like Jesus is a a person that would try and commence harm. I mean, we have seen him create, uh, like, very good in fighting skills. He has fought off Rick and Daryl at the same time, but eventually gets strapped down by their guns. So the guns always win, but he does have some good fighting techniques and good techniques in general because then as they're driving down and they get into this uh, valley, I guess, of grass, Jesus apparently comes off the roof. Nice stunt there, by the way. He flies off the roof. And it's just a huge action scene. Rick killing the walkers while Daryl actually tries to, to kill this guy or at least like get him, get the truck back. But... The thing that really stood out to me about this guy, Jesus, is that I don't really think this is what pointed out to me that he is trying to do harm. It just, I wouldn't trust him still, but he actually goes away out of his way to save Daryl when Daryl could have easily died there not paying attention, and he, you know, he says duck, and then it just, it, he takes out the walker behind him, and Daryl's like, oh, thanks, that's my gun, and punches him, like, <clears throat> you know what I mean? It's just... It doesn't seem like this guy's bad, he just wants something extra, either from them or from from the food truck, but sadly, oh no, the food truck fell in the lake, and that's the end of the food, so they end up getting in another car and going all the way back to Alexandria. I also don't know what some people are thinking of the new character Jesus here. Could he be in some relation to Negan as we've seen uh, Negan already casted for future episodes? Could he have some relation to that? In my own personal opinion, I'm going to say my opinion here, I don't think that he has anything to do with Negan and his group. I just think that he is on his own and uh, just happened to come across Rick and Daryl, but you can also leave your comments below on what you guys think about that one. And finally, getting into the last moments within this episode, we finally see hashtag Rishon come to The Walking Dead. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Michonne and Rick 
together. And I'm going to explain a little bit about why I think this kind of evolved over since the beginning of The Walking Dead. So in the beginning, obviously, seasons one through three, Rick and Lori were obviously husband and wife, like actual husband and wife, even before the apocalypse. So I didn't think that you would feel that Rick wouldn't go out of his way. But then you think after Lori died, what ended up happening? He obviously loses everything. I mean, obviously, after Shane died, it was kind of a big impact on him. And you could have you saw that because he started making... Making, he, t- he basically told the group that it wasn't a democracy anymore, and then eventually later on changed that role, but then after he lost Lori, it was just like, game is over, now it's time to get angry, and then it turned into a psychotic version of Rick, who just went on like merciless killing streaks on zombies, like walking around outside, we didn't know what was going on, he was delusional, he would see visions, it was just crazy about how, how he thinks, right? Then... You know, it kind of settles down right around the point where they end up finding Michonne and then they end up uh, getting involved with the governor and all that. So Rick kind of gains his consciousness back. Michonne is starting to be a part of their group in season three. So I think I feel that Rick has a, has a border for what has you know become of what women are now. Because now Michonne's getting in, and I feel like the, this relationship developed over since she came in, to obviously now was a very slow relationship, obviously over three seasons, but getting to know each other more was a great experience. Then, in season five, we got to see Jesse for, the for, well, later on in season five and also in season six, and we got to see the relationship between Rick and Jesse, but then... In, see, in the last episode, we obviously find out that Jesse ends up dying, and Rick just cannot... I mean, obviously his son got shot too, which is another reason why, but he just can't handle it. It just... It, the, the emotions that he must have been feeling along with the way that they showed it, how... She was just, uh, when, when he was hacking her arm off to try and save Carl from, from that same fate, you just saw, like, the, the redness in, of anger within him, and, of course, then we obviously see that Rick goes out there and tries to fight all of them off, which ends up working out, obviously, in the end, we know, but it, it just goes to show how he loved two women as wife figures and eventually became angry. Now it's two months later, we've gotten into this episode, and now we're starting to see a love figure year again in Rick so I feel like he's trying to do this to make himself feel happy either about himself or about other people and he's known Michonne for a long time so this could end up working on the long run but you can guys can let me know about what you think about Rashon in the comments section below but finally at the very end of the episode we see them together in bed Michonne and Rick obviously and then all of a sudden it's just like Jesus is randomly there and he's like Rick Rick, get up, I just want to talk, or something, calm, you know, it's not like he's intruding, I mean, well, he did intrude, but it's not like he's, like, forcefully trying to get someone or hurt someone, he just wanted to talk to Rick, now, my number one question is, who left Jesus unattended, that's a big problem, I don't know if he could have caused them to, to not pay attention to him in some way, or just somebody wasn't paying attention, but he ended up getting out of where he was, where Denise was looking over him, because, obviously, he passed out, back where the he left the truck and then they brought him back to Alexandria but how did he go from there to getting in their room and they obviously arise with the quickness like something's about to happen now at this point I still obviously wouldn't trust this man Jesus but I do feel like he is uh not harmful in a way because I think I feel like he still wants to negotiate but you can also let me know your thoughts on Jesus on Rashon down in the comments section below those are the main points for this episode Another thing that I want to say also on the ending of this, kind of going into the exclusive video that we've seen of the next premiere or the next uh, week's episode of The Walking Dead, was that we see them planting tomatoes like Glenn and Maggie and whatever. And then right across, that just shows a little clip of Denise running outside Abraham and they meet together and then they run back into the building like something happened. So, in my own opinion, it looks like this might have happened. This That particular scene might have happened after Jesus either escaped or unattended or he did something to get out of there and get to Rick some in some way that's what it looks like to me but you can also let me know your thoughts on that down below that is it for this week's episode of the walking dead reviews of course leave a comment below what you think about everything like i've been saying like and if you did enjoy and subscribe for more content let me know if i can make these videos any better and i will see you on next week's episode and all my videos to come this is ninja geek i'm out and peace.